on that note, we're going to talk about the fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> All right. We're, we're in our series on the fruit of the Spirit out of Galatians 5, through 23, so grab your Bibles, and you probably want to be in Galatians, although we're going to be kind of all over the place this morning. Here is the passage out of Galatians, and we've been talking through this whole series, and we're going to be walking through each one of these things, but let's make sure we've got it all in our heads. The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, and what do we learn about this word fruit? It's singular. So all of this fruit in total is what's produced in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And against, there's no law against any of those things. So we've talked about love and joy. Today we're going to talk about peace. We're going to talk about what it means to live in peace. Now, I don't know if you've been paying much attention to our culture lately. Maybe you've picked this up. But we're living in a time where there seems to be very little peace. Would you agree with that? What are some of the things that we're at war with? It seems like everyone's at war about something. Vaccines, right? We've got this whole pandemic thing going on. We'll just put it under that big umbrella. No matter what you want to talk about as it relates to the pandemic, somebody will argue with you. Regardless of what side you're on, you can find someone who says, nope, that's wrong, you're an idiot, right? And then someone will come along and argue that point, all right? What else? Politics. And politics was like right at the top of my list. It seems like in the political world, there's no more. We're not even allowed to work together on anything. We're not allowed to agree with someone across the aisle or work together or be in union and unity on anything. The, the golden rule is if you can throw someone under the bus, do it more than once, right? Yeah, back it, once you throw them under, back it up, run over them a few more times, make sure they're good and dead, right? That's politically, we're at war with one another. All right, anything else you can think of? Huh? What's that? Plastic? <laughs> We're a war over plastic? Is it the paper or plastic thing? Plastic straws, paper straws. Yep, see, we'll fight over anything. <laughs> paper or plastic, we'll fight over that. How about financially? Are we, are we got some struggle and strife over finances? Gasoline. Yeah, gas prices. You want to see people get upset. Raise guys' gas prices, right? It's like that is our God-given right to have petroleum in our cars. How dare you raise the price on that? We'll go to war over that, right? All right, how about this? What else I got on my list? How about racial and social injustice? That feels like it's nearing the boiling point, doesn't it? And again, it doesn't matter what side you're on, there's a war waging. But the only thing right now, that it, particularly in American culture that we're not at, is at war. But it's coming. There's war in the world. In fact, I read an article just this morning that said they have predicted where World War III is likely to occur. And it's in Taiwan. It's in the South China Sea. There's this prediction, and guess who the rivals will be? Guess who the two superpowers will be? Not China and Russia. The United States and China. That's where the tension is right now in the South China Sea, and in particular around Taiwan. And there are political people that say we are on the verge, we're at least on the cusp, we can see a fight coming. And if that fight comes between two nuclear superpowers, you don't want to be anywhere near that, do you? It's not a fun time to be alive, is it? In some ways it is, in some ways it's not. How about you, think about your own personal life. On a scale of one to ten, one being... Uh, you're living on a beach in Margaritaville. <laughs> you have all the money in the world. You don't even have a job. You're retired. You have nothing to think about, nothing to worry about. Life is good. That's one. Ten is you're on death row, right? You have no hope, no future. Death is on its way. There's a whole lot of stress and anxiety in between those two things. Where's your life? What do you think the average is for America? I've not done a study, but what do you think the average is for, the, for most Americans? Five or six? Man, you guys are way more optimistic than me. I'm thinking more like eight. S- seven, eight. 
But maybe, hey, maybe your life is a five. Fantastic. Then you don't need this message at all. I know for me, I live up towards the upper end of that. And stress and anxiety, it's just a constant part of our lives. In fact, it, it reminds me, it, it, peace is one of those things, right? That the harder you try to get it, the more elusive it is, right? I want more peace. And it just seems to elude us and get away from us because stress and anxiety are a sign of our times. In fact, I, I want to show it to you. I, I want to illustrate this. In fact, Amy, uh, who was playing uh, the, the cajon and, and piano said this morning, she said, Pastor, you did water the first week, electricity the second week. Today has to be fire. <laughs> Today I'm not going to do fire. Maybe next week though. Uh, but I am, I, I'm going to show you we're going to use the most evil game ever created. <laughs> Anyone ever seen this stupid game? This is a game called Perfection. This is a game from the 80s. This game is stupid. <laughs> it's a simple game. I mean, what's the point? I got a shape. I put the shape where the shape belongs, right? Simple. And I have 60 seconds to do that. All right, would anyone like to come give it a shot? I knew that would be your answer. I got 20 bucks on the line for someone who can do it. Right there, come on up. All right, give him a round of applause. All right, you want to make sure you're on camera. Now listen, this is simple, right? No problem. Now, here's the deal. 20 bucks is yours, but you have to complete this game. Now, hold on. That means you got to put all the places where they go and hit the stop button, okay, before, yeah, before you know what it, have you ever played this? Okay, now, two things. Number one, every spot, ha, every shape has a spot. If it doesn't fit, it's not because the game is wrong, you're in the wrong place, Okay. <laughs> You got 60 seconds. Now, this is not one of those games where you're going to get this 20 bucks no matter what. Because this is my 20 bucks. All right? You have to complete the game, and no one here, they may feel sorry for you, but I will not feel sorry enough for you to give you $20. Are you ready? Come on, step over here. Are you ready? Set, go. All right, first he started off by putting something with lines in a round circle. Oh, you got one. All right, cheer him on. Come on now. Oh, it's close. It looks like he goes there. See, that's what's evil about this game is you think all the shapes have only one place. Oh, by the way, you're down to 35 seconds. How's that? Oh, he found the circle. Yes, all right. All right, keep going. You've got 25 seconds left. Come on now. 20 bucks on the line, man. Come on. Oh, there it goes. All right, keep going. 15 seconds. No. Oh, hurry, hurry, hurry. Hurry. Ah. Two hands. Oh, yeah, there you go. That'll make it better. Five seconds. Here you go. Just push it harder. Oh. Give him a round of applause. Thanks for trying, man. All right. Whew. We're going to put that there. All right. You saw he got about a third of the way. That's why this game is stupid. This, this, it, and it's so frustrating and stressful. Now, I know some of you say, Pastor, you're so mean. You were adding stress to the whole thing. In fact, he was telling me, shut up. I'm trying to do the thing. Yeah, but I have my $20 on the line. It was my job to add stress. Anyone ever felt that kind of stress in your life? But we're called to peace. I mean, I, I'm, I feel the stress, and I, it was just my money on the line. I wasn't even the one trying to put the things in. I tried to do it earlier this week just to see if it could be done. I don't think it can be done. Maybe if you line them all up first and then just put them in. But they, it's evil. Like, uh, let me show you. This guy, there's two places this can go. That's evil. It adds all this stress, right? We think we got life figured out. We think we know where the peace goes. And someone seems to change the rules, don't they? 
How do we live at peace? Well, I got to tell you, this is not the first time in history that we've been in this place where we've seen uh, political unrest, where financially we've been unsure, where we've even had a pandemic. This isn't the first time in history we've had that. It's not the first time in history we've had racial and social injustice. It's not the first time when we could use a little peace in our lives. In fact, I want to take you back 60 years. So it's something to do in the math. If I go back 60 years, about where are we? We're in the 60s. What was the 60s known for, man? Peace, man. We have symbols for peace, right? That's one of them. Peace, bro. I so wanted to wear tie-dye and bell-bottoms today. I could not find them. I think they've come back because you can't find them anywhere. The 1960s, as a decade, is known as the decade of love and peace, man. Don't make, don't make love, not war. Make love, don't make war, man. It's all okay. It's peace. We wrote songs about it. I mean, it was the big group that came up during this time. The Beatles, right? How many of their songs are about love and peace? And just, we, we, it was like this time when we said, now, was there a lot of peace in this time? No, in fact, we were coming out of a lot of strife and heading into a lot of strife. War and anxiety and stress and the world, or at least a segment of our culture said, let's just be at peace. How well did that work out? Let's just look in the 60s and early 70s. We had a little thing called Vietnam. How did that end up? Not so good. In fact, it's one of those things, you don't even want to bring it up. Right? As an American, you're like, let's not talk about that. Let's pretend that didn't happen. Because we don't like how it ended. We don't like how it started. We don't like anything in between. In fact, this was the war that drew us into needing and and declaring we're just going to live at peace. And it created this political divide within our country, didn't it? In fact, you had the conservatives and you had the hippies, right? And they hated one another. Man, it's a good thing we don't have that kind of divide in our country today. (laughs) Right? Uh, And then some bad stuff started happening. Things like uh, someone shot our president. And someone shot Martin Luther King, who was a man who was dedicated his life to peace and racial and social justice. The killing didn't stop there. How about Bobby Kennedy? Oh, Bobby Kennedy's next. And then the Olympics were going on in 1968, and there there were political protests. There were protests at the Olympics. I can hardly imagine that happening. (laughs) It's like that headline has been brought out today, right? In the last two weeks, we've heard something very similar to that. Uh, Let's see, what else? Oh yeah, there was this little thing. In fact, there was so much going on in the 60s, this was like a blip. There was a thing called the Hong Kong flu in 1968. Killed 100,000 Americans and a million people worldwide. And you've probably never heard of it because of everything else that was going on. But this is a picture from 1968. And for those of you who can see, what are they wearing? And guess what they were arguing about? In 1968, they were arguing about whether to wear masks because of a pandemic. It's a good thing we've learned our lessons. All right? And then politically, everything was peachy with Mr. Nixon. Nothing went wrong there, right? In fact, here's, and I almost got this picture, but you remember the picture? What, what was he showing? Peace. peace. This is not a time of peace. And this, there's one more. How about Roe v. Wade? Roe v. Wade happened in the 60s. Political, financial, racial, social, pandemic, everything we're dealing with now, we dealt with in the 60s. So here's what we should do. We should just do exactly what they did and say, let's just be at peace, man. Oh, by the way, they were smoking pot in the 60s, too. (laughs) See, we have come a long way. Now it's just not illegal, right? Now we can all be hippies. Aren't we so excited? Isn't it going to solve all of the world's problems? Let's just be at peace, wear some dye-dye and bell-bottoms. Did it work? No. So it begs the question, what does work? Well, we tried it our way. And by the way, the 60s weren't the last time we've tried it. We've tried it over and 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 over again. We've tried to manufacture and create and declare peace. 
We even, it's, you know this answer. If you were a beauty pageant contestant and they ask you what you would like, what your dream is, what is the only answer? World, World peace. peace. And if a beauty pageant would just declare it one more time, I'm sure it will happen. When you get home, just declare peace in your house. If you have children, just tell your children, we are living at peace. I have declared it. And, and, and then you give me a call five minutes later when war breaks out in your household. How do we get to peace? We're called to live at peace, yes? I mean, it's right there. It says the Spirit will produce peace in your life. So how do we get it? How about we try it God's way instead of our way? So let's talk about what God's way is. There's, scripture talks about peace all over the place. And when you start to analyze and review and study the peace in scripture, you find there are three areas that we're at war with a lot of things in a lot of different ways. And that in order to have peace, we need to have peace in three particular areas of our life. Are you ready for area number one? And by the way, we have to conquer peace. (laughs) Do you like that term? Conquer peace. You got to get peace. You got to have peace in every one of these areas and you got to do them in order. The first, the first thing that we are at war with is with God himself. Right. Scripture says we are God's enemies. That the sinful nature within us separates us from him and makes us his enemy. So the first thing we got to do is find peace with God. Amen? We should all agree on that one, Right? In fact, Scripture tells us this in Galatians 5. Therefore, no, not in Galatians 5. That's wrong. It is actually in Romans 5.1. Don't worry about this. Don't, don't, it's not, that's not it. It's Romans 5.1. It says, therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, since we have been made right with God by faith, then we now have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. How do we make peace with God? We've sung about it all morning long. You believe what Jesus Christ did for you. You believe it. You receive it for yourself. You can't, you can't make peace with God on your own. Israelites tried it for centuries and it didn't work. God said, I will make you right with myself. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. And because of what he has done, we now have peace with God. Isn't that exciting? That's the first place to start. If you don't have peace with God, you're not going to find peace anywhere else in your life because it will never be right. It will never feel right. In fact, that's the whole problem with the stuff in the 60s. We left God, there was a whole Jesus movement in the 60s, but they forgot Jesus in the whole Jesus movement. It's weird, isn't it? All right. So we have peace with God. Any idea where we next need to find peace? With ourselves. Anyone in the room ever waged war with yourself? Anyone ever felt like you were sometimes your own worst enemy? You're the hardest on yourself than you are with anybody else? And in fact, if anyone knew the things you knew about you or the things you think or the things you do, if anyone knew... They'd discover what kind of a fraud you are, and it would be shameful. Anyone ever felt like that? I have. So how do you get peace within yourself? Scripture tells us it's a gift from from God. Jesus himself said, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. How many would like to have peace of mind? How many would like to have peace of heart? He says, I'm giving this as a gift, and the peace that I give is, is a gift that the world cannot give. So don't be troubled and don't be afraid. It's a gift from God, and and Paul goes on to say, you need to let that peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts, for as members of one body, you are called to live at peace. Isn't that weird? Paul says, as Christians in the church, we should live at peace with one another. What a novel idea. Man, we kill each other. It's friendly fire in the church, isn't it? How dare you do that thing you did? How dare, you, how dare you put that thing on social media you put on? By the way, this is a freebie. 
This is a way to immediately and instantaneously gain more peace and have less strife in your life. Get off social media, period. Amen. Just get off of it. I did, I did a weird thing this week. I deleted it off of my phone. Oh, it was glorious. You know why I deleted it off my phone? Because I have been on it. And you know how much strife I've had over social media since I got off of it? Zero. It's glorious. Okay, back to our point. You've got to let the peace that comes from Christ, it's his gift. You have to let it rule in your hearts. But there's a big question. How do I do that? I'm glad you asked. Philippians chapter 4 tells us there's an exchange that needs to take place. Paul says in Philippians 4, don't worry about anything. Sure, Paul. You don't know my life. You want to stack your life up against Paul's anytime? Give it a shot. You are blessed beyond measure compared to Paul's life. And Paul says, do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. What's the exchange here? I've got worry and stress. What should I do? Pray. See, that's why you didn't get the 20 bucks. You didn't pray before you played the game. Right? If you would just said a little prayer, maybe God would have just flown them in there for you. Right? Now, is that exactly how it works? No. He says, no, you got to tell God what you need and thank him for everything that he's done. Then, did you hear that word? That's an important word. It's a pivot word, right? You take all your pent up stress and anxiety and worry and you give it over to God in prayer and you tell him what you need and you thank him for everything that he's already done for you. Then what will you get? What's the exchange? You'll get God's peace that you can't even begin to understand and it will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, but this is an exchange worth, get, worth having. God, here's my worry and struggle. That's yours. And you'll give me your peace. That's a good deal. But you have to do it. You have to do it. This peace is a free gift and God says, what I want you to do is, it, have you ever done one of those gift exchange things? White elephant gift exchange things? You ever been the one that brought a good gift to a white elephant exchange? Like you brought something really nice, and what did you go home with? Somebody else's trash. That's not a good exchange. Well, God, Jesus is saying, look, here's my peace. How much worry and frustration do you think God has? Zero says, you get my peace in exchange, I'll take your worry. And here's what we do. Mm. Nah, I think I'll hold on to this. I think I'll keep this instead of giving it to you and receiving your peace. Peace is free for the taking, but we got to take it. We have to receive it, just like all of the fruit that we're talking about. All of this fruit, you got to take it. That sounds really simple, right? But is that easy? No, how, many, how often do you have to do that? All the time. Constantly. Ah, oh, but pastor, I prayed this once in 1914. <laughs> okay, you're not that old. 1970, and I've, been, I've had peace ever since. That's not how it works. Every time you have stress or anxiety, you need to give it to God in prayer and say, God, I'm receiving your peace. I'm actively receiving your peace in place of my stress and anxiety. All right. Are you ready for the hardest one? Because we're not done. We got peace with God. We got peace with ourselves. What's the last one? You, you know what's coming. Peace. With I hear it in your voices. Peace with others. You're going to talk about my stupid neighbor again, aren't you? Yep. Do you notice that we've gone through this? I don't know which is harder. You tell me, which is harder? Peace within or peace with others? Uh, I bet we'd be split. In fact, you may be, maybe you got peace within yourself. You say, man, I, don't, I can't even begin to think about peace with others because I'm the big problem. And others of you are saying, nope, I'm not the problem. It's everybody else. <laughs> if everybody else, that's how I feel about driving. If everyone would drive like me, the world would be a much better place. But they don't drive like me. They drive like Californians. I don't know. <laughs> you know it's true. 
I mean, the invasion has, is complete. in and out is now here, and we are blessed for it, right? How do you have peace with others? This may be the most difficult. Can I tell you that this is not an option? Romans 12, 18, do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. There's not a lot of wiggle room there, is there? Did you say thanks a lot? Yeah. Not a lot of wiggle room, is there? Do what? All that you can can to live in peace with everyone. Every single person on the planet. And again, Paul uh, talks about us here in this room and watching online. He says, dear brothers and sisters, I close my letter with these last words. Be joyful. That's what we talked about last week, right? Be joyful. Grow to maturity. Encourage each other. Live in harmony and peace. Then the God of love and peace will be with you. See how all these are intertwined? When we have peace with one another and we do everything we can to live in harmony and peace with one another, then the God of love and peace is with us. But if we're constantly at war with one another and we're constantly waging war with one another, then guess what? Then the God of love and peace is not with us. Pastor, can you tell me where the loophole is for social media? Because I'm sure if it happens on social media, it doesn't really happen. Right? I mean, words you say on social media don't really hurt people. Right? Is that right? No, it's wrong. The problem with the big problem with social media nowadays is you just get to go hurt somebody and then walk away and never see the effects of it. Right? Anyone ever been hurt by someone on social media? I have. I've been called, man, this, this is cruel. Someone called me once the Bronco Pastor. <laughs> On a Google review for us as a church. It said all he talks about is the Broncos. He never talks about Jesus. Oh. Ouch. That ruined my day for a week or more. Now, it's not there. I don't know how it disappeared. Thank goodness it did. And I don't talk about the Broncos much anymore because things that happen on social media still hurt us, right? I have said things on social media. You, you can feel sorry for me, but can I be honest? I'm, I've said things and done things on social media that I, I should be ashamed of. I've said and done things face-to-face to people that I should be ashamed of. We're called to live at peace. Now, I know now that we've come to this part, you're going to say, Pastor, I'm so glad you said this because I feel so much better. I mean, I know exactly how to live at peace, right? You know how to live at peace with God, peace within, and peace with others. Are you crystal clear? Be honest. Yeah, clear as mud. Me either. In fact, this morning, as I was getting ready, to stand up here, I was like, hey, God, it just doesn't feel like enough. It doesn't feel like I've really hit on the thing. Because it feels like all I'm saying so far and all God's word is saying so far is just be at peace. I mean, yes, it's true. I mean, how do you have peace with God? We've got the pieces, right? We've got little pieces. How do you have peace with God? Through Jesus. That's the only way is through Jesus and what he's done for us. How do you have peace inside? How do you have peace with yourself? Through prayer. Right? You give God your worries, your anxieties. You give those over to him. He gives you his peace. How about peace with others? It's not try hard. Here's really, you got to do everything you can, which really what it boils down to, and scripture talks about this, is you got to give people a break. You got to give people a break. Give them the benefit of the doubt and assume good in them. You know what we tend to assume about others? Really bad. You know, we show our highlight reel and we assume oh, everything's good. That's what you get to see is all the good about me, right? And we assume all the bad about everybody else. Give people a break. But I think there's something that, that goes over all of this. And, and so I spent some time in prayer this morning. And God, and God reminded me, I'd done some study on what this word peace means. And I'm not going to go into a big Greek lesson, but it, it's one of those things when I read the definition, you ever read a definition and you're like, oh, thanks. That really helped, 
right? Well, I read the definition of peace and here was the definition I got, the absence of war. Thanks. That helped a lot. Except it actually did. Because this morning when God, God and I were having a conversation about this, he said, you know what the problem is, is we're at war with God, we're at war with ourselves, and we're at war with the world, right? What do we need to do? There, the 60s almost got it right. So close. What do we need to do? If you don't want to be at war anymore, what do you do? You call a truce. So what we need to do is call a truce. Call a truce with God. God, what if you prayed this prayer, if you've been at war with God? God, I surrender. I give up. I'm done. Not my way, your way. Does that work? And what if God said, I accept your unconditional surrender. And now we will live at peace. You will have my peace. I will be the Lord. I will be king. And I'll give you everything that you need. That's wonderful, isn't it? All right. How about peace with yourself? What if you said these words today? Self, I surrender. I'm tired of constantly being your own worst enemy. I'm not going to talk about your body in a bad way anymore. I'm not going to worry about the job that I have anymore. I'm going to give myself a break. I call a truce. And then you accept your unconditional surrender. And say, instead of me being my worst enemy, because I've already called a truce with God, he's the king, I make it all his problem anyway, and he promises to give me his peace. You see how these have to work in order? Are you ready for the last one? What if you call a truce with the people you're at war with in the world? What if? Can I just do a little what if game? What if Republicans and Democrats said, we surrender? Some of you are like, no, because I'm in this group. We can't do that. And we're right. What if we said, you know what? I don't have to be right. Why don't we figure out what works together? Wouldn't that be awesome? What if you and your neighbor, what if you're at war with your neighbor and you said, I heard a story this week. That we were at a birthday party at the Winks. And someone was telling a story about how their dog, it was their job to, to clean up after the dog. And so what this teenager did was throw it over the neighbor's fence. <laughs> throw it all over the neighbor's fence. Thinking, hey, it's not in my yard anymore. I did my job. Imagine how the neighbor felt. The neighbor lost his mind. And came knocking on the door, right? <clears throat> what if instead the neighbor had said, you know what, I'll deal with it. That's not fair. That's not my problem, right? Do everything you can to live at peace with everyone. What if we just call the truce with everyone? I heard a comedian this week, and I love this idea. He, this comedian said, you know what? I am tired of arguing with people, so here's what I do now. And I just want to challenge you with this. He said, whenever I get in to start having a conversation with somebody, and he says, I've got these views, right? And, and I find that I'm in opposition with somebody, I just immediately switch to their point. <laughs> so they'll say, I, I don't know, give me something people argue about. Real meat versus vegetarian, right? So you say, man, I'm a, ve- I'm a meat eater and I come up across this vegetarian and they start talking to me about being a vegetarian, how I shouldn't eat meat. He says, immediately, I'm like, yep, you're right. I'm going to be a vegetarian from now on. <laughs> you're right, I'm wrong. And you know what it's done? No more arguments. Now, yeah, he's a liar. <laughs> he is a liar. So there is a way to do both, Right? <laughs> So maybe don't just say you're going to do it. Maybe just say, you know what? This is not something to worth, worth arguing about. I just don't care about this enough. I'm going to choose peace instead of war in this particular case. Here's my real challenge. Make it intentional plan this week to be wrong once. Just be wrong once this week. Say, so you know what? 
I think you're right. Now, for husbands and wives in the room, you're thinking, you don't, that'll, that'll upset the balance of power in our house. You don't understand what that will do. Man, I promise you, if you look at your wife dead in the eyes and you mean, you know what? I was wrong. You were right. It'd be a good day. It'd be a good day for you. Here's what we're talking about. Here's what peace really does. What did I call this game? The dumbest game in the planet, right? But you know what I found out? If you play this game like this, yeah, what's different? It's no timer. There's no stress. I still got my 20 bucks sitting over there, right? <laughs> I'm not worried about it. Here's what's going to happen with this game. I'm going to win. I'm going to succeed at this game. And when we live at peace with God, and we live at peace with ourselves, and we live at peace with the world, it's like playing the game. It, everyone will look at you and go, you're playing a different kind of game. What happened to you? Why aren't you stressed out? And your answer is going to be, because I'm not playing that game. I'm playing a different game. There's no more timers on my game. And when a piece doesn't fit, I, you know, guess what I do? Make it fit. Yeah. <laughs> Get a hammer and make it fit. No. Nope. You know what I do? I just try it in a different spot. Eventually, I'm going to figure it out. And eventually, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to get all the pieces in. I have no idea how long that took. It was not less than 60 seconds. I can almost guarantee you that. It was probably a little more than 60 seconds. But guess what? Who cares? What are we in such a hurry for? Why does there have to be a timer on a stupid game like this? Right? Let's change the rules and let's be at peace with ourselves, with God, and with one another. Do everything you can to live at peace with everyone. Let's stand and pray. Father, we thank you for the peace that you give to us, for the fact that you make us right with yourself through Jesus Christ. The fact that we can have peace within our own hearts and minds and give you all of our stress and anxiety, turn the timer off on the game and just receive your peace because you know where every peace goes. And because we have peace with you and because we have peace with ourselves, there's no reason for us to be at war with one another. Instead, we can begin to see people the way that you see them. You, we can see their brokenness, their pain, their hurt, their struggle, and we can help Instead of adding to what they're going through, we can lend a helping hand. We can extend a hand of love and joy and peace to the people in our lives. Father, help us embrace this truth. Help us live this truth out in our lives every single day. And all God's people said, amen. amen.